So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create your own custom vMix triggers and do some really cool effects with your shows. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and open up vMix, same as always. Um, and I have a preset that I did from a very long time ago. This is one of the podcasts I did. Uh, so I just opened it up and added some new assets. Uh, I've got some of the loops, the videos, a stinger, a wipe, uh, some graphics and some audio. So we're going to go over triggers and how you can set them up. Uh, to you know transition audio manually and do all that stuff which should be pretty cool to show anyway starting off um, let's talk about what triggers are so in order to access triggers all you need to do is click on the little cog wheel on your input and once you go to them here in your input settings you go all the way down to triggers and select triggers here you have different options you've got triggers functions input duration delay value and mix so down here at the buttons you got it says on completion, fade preview, mix number, and then the values you can put in for the columns above, add, edit, and delete. This is all very, very self-explanatory, like it's super simple. When you click on on completion here, you can have a drop-down menu that has a bunch of different options. On completion, what does this do? When something is completed, for example, a video or an audio track, this will create a certain trigger and do a certain function on a certain input, so you kind of get to see the gist of it. Here we have on transition in, so every time you transition in something, this will do something. Every time you transition out, this will do something. Every time an overlay comes in of a certain input, it will do something. So you can essentially do all of this different stuff. Um, and same on call, on call connected, on call disconnected. So if somebody's VMUX call disconnects, you can replace their video with an image so it's not a still frame. You can do some really, really cool stuff. And same here with the countdown completed. So the first thing we're gonna start with is on transition in. I'm going to show you how you can basically crossfade music and do all that cool stuff. So, here you can select your function by clicking here, and you have literally everything. So, if you're creative enough, you can set up whatever you want. So, all I'm going to do is type in fade, and I'm going to select set volume fade. I have a bunch of audio inputs, so I'm first going to select the Be My Music video number 14, and I'm going to make it so every time you transition into the start input, this song will fade in and then it's going to restart and play from the beginning. So here you can see it says volume 0 to 100 and then milliseconds on the value. So this means what the volume will be, so I'm going to make it go to 75 volume over 2500 milliseconds, which is two and a half seconds. I'm going to click add. Now I'm going to create one more of these which will restart the song, so play it from the beginning. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this, click here for function, and I'm going to just type in restart. Boom. Now I'm going to click add, so now it adds a separate function. So I have a trigger for restarting it every time we transition in, and then a function for setting the volume up. I'm going to move this to the top, so this is the first thing that happens, it restarts and then it fades it up. So now when I close this, one really important thing about this is we need to make sure this crossfade here, the automatic audio mixing for the input is off. So make sure you turn this off and you turn the audio on the whole time, and you turn it all the way down and I'm going to go to my audio here, I'm going to click play, and I'm going to loop the music. So now every time I'm going to go to my start screen, so if I transition to it, you'll be able to see this will crossfade in over two and a half seconds very quickly. There we go, so it's crossfading in in a really nice way, and as you can see it's starting from the beginning. So if I go ahead and turn this down so we don't have to listen to it, there we go. And I'm going to do literally the same thing, but on my transition out. So I'm going to click on this, and all I'm going to do is set on transition out, and I'm going to click zero here, and I'm going to press add. So now, every time I transition out, this will transition out. So if I turn the music back on, and I fade out, boom. Every time I transition back, as you can see, the music is still 42 seconds in, it's still playing. But if I go back to my start screen, as you can see, the audio has restarted, and that is it. Beautiful. So, going back to my cameras. Here we have nice automatic audio mixing. Now, what I do during a show is I do this for all my graphics pretty much. If I want to have a certain graphic have a certain sound, a certain camera have a certain bed music, that is literally the way I do things. You click on the little cogwheel, 
go to triggers and set it up here. And it's basically infinite things you can do. And like I said, it's super self-explanatory. All you have to do is hit transition in, transition out, overlay and overlay out. And then you choose your function and you can do everything. And you can have unlimited numbers of functions. So you can make it do a whole sequence, a whole basically macro automatically, which is very, very cool. So now that we have our countdown made, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a trigger to this and go ahead, go to my graphics, gonna go to my GFX underscore timer, which is here. I'm gonna go on the cogwheel and I'm gonna just click on countdown completed. Let's just make it Stinger one, which is our first transition. And let's do that to input FS cams. So if we add that in and then we change the timer to, let's say just five seconds for testing purposes, this should automatically wipe to that other input once the countdown's done. Boom. Previews it and automatically wipes it. Really cool. So as I said, you can just go on anything, go to triggers and then just set it up as you wish. Like there's so many different things. I even made it so every time I transition to a replay, it would automatically turn on an overlay to you know have a really cool hood on the top. And then every time I transition out to turn it off and you can do that with sponsor logos and all that jazz. It's really, really nice. So I would really, really recommend doing something like this.